Hey everybody, so let's talk a little bit about what ballistic coefficient actually is, what it means and how it's actually used in long range shooting. So first things first up here on the board is I've got uh, this listed as G1 and this projectile shape. Now what this is, is this is kind of your typical flat base round nose bullet. Over here I've got a G7 listed underneath kind of more of your typical VLD style bullet um, with your bow tail. So first things first, um, with the G series of ballistic coefficients, those are typically a reference to a standard projectile. So I don't have all the measurements and dimensions for what that standard is, but the G1 has a standard, the G7 has a standard, and there's a whole bunch of other G factors based on different shapes of projectiles, but they are based on a shape of projectile. So that's important because these are kind of established parameters that are kind of the normal for that shape of bullet, which we'll kind of look at here in a second, and how that compares to the BC you're getting on your box. But the most, the most important thing to pick out of this is the G1 is actually made for this shape. You will typically see it on some of your long range bullets um, because what that ends up being is that ballistic coefficient ends up being higher on the G1 than the G7. But that is actually not the most accurate and most um, consistent number to use, which like I said again, we'll look at here in a second. <clears throat> so first things first, um, ballistic coefficient, the equation for it, is the mass divided by the drag coefficient times the area. So all things being equal in a bullet, if you're shooting a bullet of the same weight and the same caliber, so the mass and the area are the same, you're gonna end up with a differentiating ballistic coefficient to help you choose your projectile because the drag coefficients for those are gonna be different. So when you're picking a BC, you want a high BC, which translate to a low drag factor. So you want as little drag as possible, which ends up giving you a high ballistic coefficient. Um, the typical one used in the industry is your sectional density of the projectile divided by what is known as a form factor. So this is kind of where we get back up into the standard projectile. So the form factor, what that ends up being is the drag coefficient of a projectile that you're wanting to use versus the drag coefficient of the standard projectile. So this is something that the factory, the bullet manufacturer is going to have to do. I'm going to have to test and kind of come up with these values, but let's look at kind of just an example here to kind of get an idea of what that means and why you should use one versus the other. So just kind of purely using some random numbers here, let's say that the bullet I want to use has a drag coefficient of 48. So we'll do 48 over here, 48 over here. So now we'll compare this to a G1 and a G7 bullet to see why they're a little bit different. So let's just say over here, G1, has a large drag factor that's gonna be much bigger than the bullet we're using. We're using a long range style bullet, so the drag factor for the G1 style bullet's gonna be much bigger. So let's just say that it's 100, just purely random. So now let's come over here and we're gonna compare it to a G7 profile bullet, which is gonna have a much better drag factor. And let's just call that one 50. So what that gives you is that gives you a G1 form factor of 0.48 and a G7 form factor of 0.96. So with the bullet I'm using, I'm using a 6mm 105 Burger VLD bullet. My sectional density comes out to be 0.254. So now what that gives me is that gives me a G1 ballistic coefficient of 0.529. And I get a G7 ballistic coefficient of 0.26 zero. But this comes back to kind of the standard model that we want to use. Because we are comparing different projectile shapes, it's not really a good accurate measurement to use the G1 style. So because you have a low drag bullet versus a bullet that has more drag, you're going to end up with a much lower form factor, which is kind of inconsistent. You're comparing apples to oranges at that point. The bullet shapes are not consistent. So when you compare it to the G7, you get a much lower ballistic coefficient but it's much more accurate because it's considering the shapes of the profiles to be nearly similar. So a little bit more about drag factor and kind of what it is, playing how it ties into this, is the drag coefficient equals two times the force of drag divided by the density of the fluid times the velocity of the projectile squared times the area. So in one of the other videos, I did mention that ballistic coefficient is constantly changing. Um, that's because the drag coefficient is constantly changing because it's a function of the air density and a function of the velocity. So we know the velocity is always changing, the bullet's always slowing down. Um, the air density 
This one should be kind of constant for where you're at, but it's always good to know when you go shooting in a new location to know what that air density is. Um, but what that ends up with is your drag factor. So the larger the drag factor, the larger the force of drag. Okay, so now let's tie that a little bit back into the ballistic coefficient equation we've got up here. So what you end up with is a smaller drag coefficient leads to a lower force of drag, a low drag coefficient leads to a higher BC. So this is where it comes into a comparison. If you're choosing bullets of the same caliber around the same weight range, um, you can compare the ballistic coefficients to see which one of those has less drag and is gonna maintain its energy better downrange. So when you're using a ballistic calculator and a ballistic solver, um, this is the reason they need the ballistic coefficient, the velocity, the caliber, and typically the elevation and humidity and to get the air density of the location you're at because this is essentially what your ballistic calculator is using to solve the equation because the ballistic coefficient is more of a comparison. It's probably going to come down and actually use more of a drag factor to do some mathematical analysis and get you um, your graphical output. So that is how those kind of tie together and that's in what your ballistic calculator is going to be ending up solving for. That's how it crunches those numbers and that's how it gives you back your results.